Last time in the good Star Trek movie. Nothing that really connects to this one, so... Fuck it. And now the next generation team takes over the plots that don't make sense. This is Star Trek Generations. Star Trek The Next Generation was a big hit on TV for years, but in their first motion picture ride out, we got a pretty unbalanced, pretty nonsensical, and at times pretty annoying series of subplots that often result in this reaction. I hate this! So, let's not waste any time, let's see how the first attempt at filmdom went. We open with the voyages of the starship Corbell, as we see it doesn't have a very long run. <laughs> It's actually crimsoning the new Starship Enterprise, as retired Captain Kirk and whichever cast members would work for scale show up to give their blessing. I just want you to know how excited we all are to have a group of living legends with us on our maiden voyage. I remember reading about your missions when I was in grade school. Oh, really? You're my hero. I'd like you to meet the helmsman of the Enterprise B, Ensign Demora Sulu. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. My father's told me some interesting stories about you. Yes! Like how he originally wanted to be the captain of the Excelsior in Star Trek II, but you wouldn't let him. Uh, how you didn't show up to Gene Roddenberry's funeral, that was pretty douchey. Uh, and how you're just an all-round great big prick. It's a fascinating read. When did he find time for a family? Finding retirement a little lonely, are we? You know, I'm glad you're an engineer. With tact like that, you'd make a lousy psychiatrist. <laughs> I'm contractually obligated to like you. So as they go out on their first trip just for a routine test run, there's, say it with me now, A distress call! They're the only ship in range, and they don't have the proper necessities, but they're going anyway. I have trained you well. So it looks like an intergalactic tapeworm is threatening two ships, as Star Trek proves once again that anyone who is not Captain Kirk is a pure incompetent. Except for these guys, but let's face it, they kiss Kirk's ass all the time. Captain Kirk, I would appreciate any suggestions you might have. Y'all ready for this? First, move us within transporter range. Leave those people who want to make tear us apart. Risk is part of the game, you want to sit in that chair. Why do we let anyone anywhere do anything without James T. Kirk? They get close and beam up as many of the survivors as they can. One of them is being played by Malcolm McDowell. Good to know, Kirk saved someone who would just end up killing him in the end. Antimatter discharge directly ahead. Might disrupt the field long enough for us to break away. But there's some techno babble that needs to be resolved, so Kirk goes down below to partake in what Star Trek does best. Then porn. That's it! We're clear. You did it, Kirk! Bridge to Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk, please, respond. Hey, Scotty, this is Captain Kirk saying... <laughs> Have Chekhov meet me on deck 15. So they see that Kirk has gone where most cast members want him to go before, and we cut to years later. We see our new crew of the Enterprise on the holodeck, still the most improbable of Star Trek inventions, as we see they're partaking in the HMS Pinnawarf. Computer! Retract, Plank, not remove, Plank. I must confess, I am uncertain as to why someone falling into freezing water is amusing. Oh, it's all in good fun, Data. I do not understand. Oh, Data, you've only been here 12 seconds and already your bit is old. Do something unexpected. Get it? Got it. That was not funny. Oh no, you want unfunny? Wait until he gets the emotion chip. That's right, there's an emotion chip in this movie. A device that, well, is pretty much humanity in a hunk of metal. Which Data now feels he has to put in, seeing how he did the unspeakable crime of pushing someone into water. So yes, you could say that his gross spurned from getting a woman wet. <laughs> 
but Captain Picard then finds out some devastating news that he decides to keep from most of the crew. Looks like the observatory took quite a beating. Will you begin an investigation? I'll be in my ready room. Sir, make it so. I thought Just do it! Boy, dodging responsibility, being totally emotional and illogical? He's acting like a real boss. But they do find one survivor, though. Malcolm McDowell's character, who we saw years before. Saren. Dr. Tolian Saren. What, no Lord of the Rings clip? What? You mean for the four years I've been doing this show, I've played every single clip from the Lord of the Rings movies? Well, great, now what am I supposed to do? Oh. Um... You ever notice how the Sauron here sounds like the Sauron from... the X-Men comics that was only around very briefly? Don't know how many of you remember that. It had to be pretty hardcore to get that reference. <laughs> But that's not important. We have Data's annoying emotion chip to exploit. I believe this beverage has produced an emotional response. Well, it looks like he hates it. Oh, yes! I hate this! It is revolting! More? Please. Well, I guess it wasn't too bad, as long as they don't exploit it anymore. <laughs> no, Jordy, I have not. Open sesame! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they go on with this for a while. Very funny, Mr. Tricorder. I love it! I cannot help myself! <laughs> okay, does someone slip him the Rob Schneider chip? Because I swear, I'm ready to smack him! Just see if you can help me get these panels open, will you? Make it so. Okay, somebody please up the badassness of this movie. <laughs> Thank you, McDowell! So Sora fights for his research and Data Chicken's out because of the emotion chip. But a Klingon ship appears and beams him out while also attempting to kidnap Geordi. Yeah, I know, big shock, Geordi gets kidnapped in Star Trek. I'm sure they put him in a holding cell with Robin, April O'Neil, and Princess Peach. They start a poker game in every dungeon. But while that's going on, we do find out why Picard is so bummed out. You never met my brother and his wife, did you? No. Robert. So opinionated. So, very gentle. What's happened? Burned to death in the fire. Um... Yeah, pretty heavy stuff to lay in the first Star Trek Next Generation film. I wouldn't mind so much, except that it's made even stranger by the fact that they were only featured in one episode, are rarely referenced, and even here we just get a few sideways pictures of them. It's kind of odd to devote so much time to this when really we know so little about them. How are we supposed to get emotionally connected to characters that we never see in the movie, or only reference very briefly? I mean, it's true- Hold on one second. Hello? Oh no. My mother's uncle's nephew's father's brother's sister's cousin's son's grandfather's great aunt's niece just died? <gasps> Melissa! <laughs> Feel bad for me! So we find out that Sauron is teamed up with the Duras sisters, a duo of Klingon terrorists who are helping Sauron out with his plan in exchange for his deadly weapon designs. Only one other person knows what Sauron is looking for, and it turns out it's that chick from Theodore Rex. He just cares about getting back to the Nexus. What's the Nexus? It's a doorway to another place that we call the Nexus. What happened to you? It was like being inside joy. Ew! I had a feeling what they did behind the scenes on The View, but... Ew! They should call it the Ew! If you go, you're not gonna care about anything. All you'll want is to stay in the Nexus. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to find the Nexus. Sounds freaking awesome. So the captain and Data try to figure out where Sauron is heading using a room on the ship that they've never used before and will never use again. But it looks cool. However, Data is having trouble handling his emotions. I cannot continue with this investigation. Are you having some kind of malfunction? No, sir. I simply... Do not have the ability to control these emotions. 
part of having feelings is learning to integrate them into your life, Data. No matter Sir, what the circumstances, I you will not be deactivated. You're an officer on board this ship, and I require you to perform your duty. Just like the duties I dodged earlier because of my emotional matters. But I'm the captain. <laughs> so they find out that Sauron's going to wipe out a star to change the direction of the Nexus to make it come towards him, wiping out all other life inhabiting the planets in that solar system. They make their way there, but the Dura sisters threaten them with hostage Jordy. Can't trust them. For all we know, they killed Jordy. They might kill you, too. We did not harm your engineer. Then return him. In exchange for what? Me. I will be your prisoner. But first, you must beam me to the surface so that I can speak with Soren. We'll consider it a prisoner exchange. So, really, with no plan in mind, they beam the captain down to the planet to talk to Soren while they beam Jordy back to the ship. Is there an amount of time he's gonna stay down there? Or couldn't the Enterprise just beam him back later, seeing how they're more powerful? Is there a reason the uniforms suddenly don't match it? Nothing's adding up. Oh, it was terrible. They tried forcing my name to Toby. So Picard tries to reason with Sauron, while it turns out Jordy's visor has been bugged with a camera so they can figure out where's the best point to penetrate their shields. For God's sake, nobody checked him out beforehand? I can't go through airport security without having my balls touched! And yet they never inspected this guy who just came off an enemy ship? Giving up our freedom's my butt! But hey, at least it puts Data in a better mood. Can you find a way to scan for life forms? I would be happy to, sir. I just love scanning for life forms. Life forms. You tiny little life forms. You precious little life forms. It's sing a long time again. This side of the internet, sing life forms. This side, sing row, row, row your boat. You tiny little life forms. Do, 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 do. You precious little life forms. Do, 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 do. Everybody, sing along. I said sing along. I'm not continuing the review unless you do. Yeah, what are you going to do? Cut the commercial? Dicks. So it seems Sauron has placed a force field around his missile that's going to blow up the star. Uh, here's an idea. Um, why don't you beam him inside the force field? That shouldn't be too hard. Number one. Thank you! But he still tries to talk him out of destroying the star in order to get to the Nexus. In the end, time is going to hunt you down. It's part of the truth of our existence. What if I told you? I found a new truth. You know, Sauron, I think you're making it more complicated than it needs to be. You're blowing up stars, killing people, destroying planets. You know where the Nexus is going. Couldn't you just save up your money and be like, Shuttle, please. <laughs> My god, that was easy. Hello, Nexus, how are you? Yeah, hey! Is everyone's common sense in the Nexus too? But the sisters figure out how to penetrate the shields and attack the Enterprise, who quickly tries to look for a way out. Back to plasma coil be susceptible to some sort of ionic pulse. Perhaps. Yes. Yes. If we sent a low-level ionic pulse, it might reset the coil and trigger the cloaking device. Yeah, yeah, I can't understand it either. I'll just sum up what it always is. Data, can we blah 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 the techno babble? Maybe. If we yada yada yada, there's a chance it'll boomity boomity. It's very unlikely that it'll hamana hamana, but we'll give it a shot and of course it'll work. All hands, brace for boomity boomity! So they pull off the the Hamana Hamana, and the sisters are now defenseless. Roll the explosion from Star Trek 6 to save money. Engage! Now partake in a funny line for the trailer. Yes! And we have our McDonald's commercial. Yes! McDonald's Star Trek meal available for your kids now. So Sauron continues to listen to Picard pester him. Hey, here's an idea. Lower the force field and shoot him. But he does eventually find a way through and try to stop him. Yeah, you know what you should have done? Lower the force field and shoot him. But even bigger problems are happening. The ship was hit bad and they have to separate the Enterprise in order to survive. Yes, be sure to move the children you always bring on this constantly attached ship of peace. You know, if I so much as heard a Klingon say a bad word, I'd take my kid off. But in hindsight, we do see the real tragedy in all this chaos. The little girl's bear! No! Oh, she doesn't go back for it. We never see it again. It's not even referenced. 
they just felt it was really important to show that a little girl lost her bear. Oh, the bear manity. Oh my god, there he goes! There goes the bear! Oh my god, goodbye, bear, goodbye! Oh, the casualties of war! We'll bury him next to Balzac. Now, to be fair, the ship separating is not only a cool scene, but it also leads to one hell of an awesome crash. These are some of the best effects in Star Trek history. Well, that wasn't such a chore now, was it? Oh, great, now I ran that out. I gotta see more movies. But Sauron does destroy the star, and the Nexus comes right at him and Picard. They get sucked into it as the rest of the Enterprise and the planet get blown apart. We then see that the Nexus is, in fact... Patrick Stewart doing another rendition of Christmas Carol? Oh, come on, guy, the tickets aren't selling anymore. Love you, Father. Love, love you. Too. No, it turns out the Nexus brings to life whatever your deepest dream is. And Picard's is that his family is back to life and totally happy. But a shadow, whatever that means, of Whoopi Goldberg is there to tell him that it's not all real and that he has a chance to still go back and save everybody. Well, as I said, time has no meaning here. So if you leave, you can go anywhere, anytime. All right, I know exactly where I want to go. To the mountaintop on Viridian 3, just before Solon destroyed the star. What? Why there? Why don't you go to where you first picked him up, or when you decided to first go out there in the first place? Fuck, why don't you go back and save your brother's family while you're at it? What's the shit about being put back in the moment you already know you lost it? What are you, a moron? Did everyone's brains just get beamed out of their heads? I have to stop him. But I need help. Yes, the most physically fit fighter the world has ever known, or William Shatner. Yeah, that, that'll work. I'm wondering, do you realize... Hold on a minute. Do you smell something burning? By the way, I know a great place that does toupees. Looks like somebody was trying to cook some eggs. It's all right. It's my house. At least it used to be. I sold it years ago. So... Yeah, as we pretty much partake in somebody's fan fiction, Picard tells Kirk what's going on. This isn't really your house. We are both of us caught up in some kind of temporal nexus. Dill. I beg your pardon? Dill we in the cabin, behind the oregano. Behold, two of the greatest Starfleet captains of all time making aid. Only one other thing to top off this epic pairing of awesomeness. Toast! We have toast! Ladies and gentlemen, toast! Oh my god, I just soiled myself! So, definitely kind of a strange setup, but it does lead to some interesting conflict. Kirk acknowledges that he wants to stay in his perfect past. You're a Starfleet officer. You have a duty. I don't need to be lectured by you. I was out saving the galaxy when your grandfather was in diapers. You're in diapers! This time I'm gonna walk up these stairs, march into that bedroom, and tell Antonia I want to marry her. Remember all that stuff I said in Star Trek V about needing your pain and how we should embrace how it makes us who we are? Total to 180! I wish I slingshot around the sun years ago and pulled this off. Hello, Nexus. I love the Nexus. No responsibility. I'm gonna like it here. <laughs> starts to realize just how unreal everything is, and that no fear and no remorse is not always such a hot thing. Because it isn't real. Come back with me. Help me stop Sauron. You know, if Spock were here, he'd say that I was an irrational, illogical human being for taking on a mission like that. Spock was going to be here, but apparently they only gave him two lines, and so he said, live long and suck it. That's my joke! First Family Guy, then Big Bang Theory, and now you critic! Oh, come on, there's enough memes on the internet. What else have I stolen from you? Well, how about my voice for big deliki to moment? Well, it's not like you really need the residuals or anything. Got me there. So Kirk and Picard go back and try to stop Sauron together. You do realize that if you never go into the Nexus, you'd never be able to come back and do this properly. 
And here's another thing. It looks like things are going awry. Why don't they just let Sauron continue with his plan and let the Nexus hit him? They can just go back and try it again, can't they? Hell, they can do this for all eternity if they want it until they get it right. It's not like anything of major importance is lost this time around. Just Captain Kirk. Get away from that launcher. I just wanted to go to the so- oh. So Kirk is lying under a bridge dying as he says his final words. We made a difference. Oh my. That's right. Captain James T. Kirk, with his very last breath, did in fact do a George Takei impression. Oh my. You win, Georgie! You win! So he buries him under some rocks. Not sure if they get him later or anything. And the shuttle comes to take Picard back to his ship. Oh, it will be good to see the ship once again. Oh, damn it! Number one, I gave you two orders while I was gone. Don't blow up the ship and don't sleep with anything. I thought the latter would be more probable. But as we look through the wreck, Data finds one survivor that he holds very close to his heart. Spot. Spot will live. So the ship is destroyed, but the Trek lives on, as they beam themselves out and make their way back to space dock. Got a Farragut. What'd you call me? Do the beam up. By the way, did I tell you I met Jim Kirk? What? Yeah, he's under a bunch of rocks. Geeks are gonna complain about it for years. So that's Star Trek Generations, it makes no sense. And that really is the biggest problem of all. I can overlook some of the annoyances as it does have some real good powerhouse scenes later, but the plot threads are so nonsensical that it really does distract. It's all over the place. Some parts are good, some parts are bad. I'm glad I saw it, but it could have been a hell of a lot better. But hey, on the plus side, Star Trek month is almost over. I have only one Star Trek movie left to review. Do you know what that means? Nolan Gara cameo! I haven't seen him at all! Isn't that fantastic? Nolan Gara! No bitching about the little tentacles that nobody cares about! No talking about all the dumb little things that I don't give a shit! It's all coming together! It's not gonna happen! There's gonna be no Linkara cameo at all! Do you hear me? No Linkara cameo at all! Tiny little life forms.